our southerly yachts have had masts made by Selden in the UK, and the new Distant Shores 3 we're having built right now will also have a Selden rig. On our recent visit to the UK, we dropped by Selden and Gosport on the south of England to look over the factory. Look at the size of this thing, it's fabulous. This is a in-mast furling mast, quite a lot larger than we're going to get for the new 48. But uh, we're at Selden Masts in Portsmouth, and there's, uh, the Navy and everything is here in the background. Very excited about the new boat project starting off here, and the whole rig and everything is going to be made by Selden. Uh, they're the world leaders in masts and everything, I think. Very trustworthy, and we're very excited. Welcome to Selden, and uh, this is our factory uh, in the UK, uh, Gosport and uh, we're part of the Selden Group, obviously, which is a worldwide manufacturer of yacht spars. Uh, but at this facility, uh, we manufacture all of the carbon spars for the group, um, as well as aluminium yacht spars for manufacturers like Discovery and uh, dinghy companies such as RS and Laser. This uh, machine here is making a mast for a Dutch boat called the Safia 26. So the machine is very, very accurate in where it positions its carbon fibre. Um, it's all CNC controlled and it follows this computer program uh, building up layers and layers of fibre and basically we can lay the fibre in any position we want and at any angle we want. And so the machine has started off by laying lots and lots of different layers, the first one at 90 degrees, uh, then more layers at 19 degrees, now sometimes, of course, there are some areas which have got even higher loads than we can put on with the machine. And uh, for that, we use um, local patches. So at the moment, Ian is just starting to position the patches on this uh, Safia mast. So we've really got um, three types of construction going on here. These carbon fibres here are all at 19 degrees away from the vertical and they're the fibres that are giving this mast its bending strength and also its torsional strength. Um, the machine has then laid these fibres that are at 90 degrees and these fibres are building up strength, in this case underneath the gooseneck fitting. And then finally at the bottom here we've got to get even more strength into some really high load areas. Uh, and so this is where the mast heel is going to be, where it sits on the deck of the boat. And then this patch here is going to be a hole where the electric cables exit. This mast will have cables running up for wind instruments and lights and all sorts of other fancy electronic gizmos, I'm sure. And all of those will go in through a hole here. And every time we drill a hole in a carbon tube, we have to put on extra reinforcement to bring the strength back up. The mast itself is basically made out of this stuff. Uh, this is carbon fibre um, with an epoxy thermoset resin. It uh, solidifies with heat. So at room temperature, the glue, the epoxy, on the carbon fibre is tacky. And as you can see, it'll all go together in a little ball. So we lay it down onto an aluminium tool using the filament winding machine and it all sticks down together nicely in this pattern. Um, what we can then do is once we've finished laying all our carbon on is heat this up um, in an oven and the resin will all turn to a solid and that will give us a solid carbon fibre tube. Or carbon. <laughs> um, I think carbon is, uh, is a lot more fun to build. Uh, the machines are absolutely great to watch when they're running and making tubes from, from this. Um, and from an engineering point of view, it's a lot more interesting because with aluminium, where we use an aluminium extrusion, uh, when we make the calculation on which extrusion to use, um, we look at the highest loaded area of the mast, which is normally um, around deck level or around the gooseneck level. Um, and the tube is uniform. So whatever the strong, whatever tube size and wall thickness we need at the deck is the strength and the thickness and the weight that we have to have all the way along the mast. But with carbon, we can put the strength exactly where we need it. So we can calculate centimetre by centimetre exactly what strength is needed at what position along the mast 
and we can position the carbon fibre in order to be able to resist those loads. OK, so this is our oven. It's called an autoclave and uh, it's basically like a massive pressure cooker. It heats things up and it's also under three times atmospheric pressure, so it heats and it squeezes. Um, these are all the masks that we've made today um, and they've all got their carbon fibre on. Uh, they've all been heat shrunk, uh, so they're all coated in plastic and then they've been put in a vacuum bag. So we put them in a bag which is this pink material here and then we've sucked all of the air out. The masts are now put in the autoclave where the temperature is increased to 90 degrees Celsius, turning the resin to a liquid. It's held at 90 for four hours so the vacuum bag can squeeze all the resin closely around the fibers. Then the temperature is raised to 130 degrees, which cures the resin to a solid. Then the spars can be removed from the oven, the mandrel removed from the spar, and fittings added to the mast. We've got the aluminium tool out of the bottom, and uh, now we're ready to put on some fittings. So this is uh, a mast going to America for a boat called an SNS 30, and at the moment it's having its boom bracket bonded onto it and its kicker bracket bonded onto it. So these are two brackets that we've made here. Um, we've made them by laying layers and layers and layers of carbon fibre into a mould and then cooking it so that it turns to a solid, taking it out of a mould and then machining it to this shape. And, uh, and these are now bonded on. So what we try to avoid a lot with carbon is drilling holes. Um, so there are going to be no nuts and no bolts and no screws or no rivets holding these fittings on. Um, they're held on with an exceedingly strong adhesive. We've admired Selden's craftsmanship and trusted their products since our first mast on distant shores in 2008. And on our last boat they provided a carbon downwind pole to test. For Distant Shores 3, we're planning a twin whisker pole package using two downwind poles so we can set up both our jibs properly for the long passages we're planning as we cross both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Please jump in with comments if you'd like more of these equipment videos as we get into the build and outfitting of the new Distant Shores 3. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for upcoming videos.